Hi, welcome. I'm Candy Michael from Powell, Ohio, and I'd like to welcome you here today to my live. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to be streaming live from my house. I'm moving my studio from a um, commercial site back into my home. So I'm still working on my lighting. Hopefully everything's gonna look okay today. Um, but I can see I have a few things I need to work on. So just bear with me. I have a couple of really fun projects that I wanna show you. Um, first off, I wanna tell you that I do have a website, candystampers.com and it's candystampers.com. And um, you're welcome to go there and check out my gallery and my videos. I show past lives, they're on YouTube and you can watch them there. And also I am going to be streaming next week on my new group page. So if you go to um, the group page that's called Candy Stampers Group, it's brand new. I just opened it up today. That's where I will be doing all my streaming from. So um, so join me and I'll be sending out some information on that as we go along this week. <clears throat> also, I'll show you guys some of my um, cards that I'm doing. I have a new Christmas card class that I just sent out yesterday. If you'd like to get on my email list, um, please either private message me or again, go to my website, candystampers.com and you can find the information there for getting on my newsletter. So thanks again for joining me. Today I'm going to be doing a buckle card, actually two buckle cards. The first one I'm going to be using the, um, hi Carol, and I saw somebody else signed on there too. Um, I'm going to be using the brand new Dragonfly Garden uh, stamp set. Now this is coming out in our next catalog, so this is kind of a sneak peek with this stamp set and the papers. It will be coming out, I believe, in uh, our January catalog. So I know it's a ways off, but it's kind of a tease. And I just wanted to play with this and it was the perfect one to use. There's so many stamps that you can use to make buckle cards, but this one was super cute based on an old card that I found in my stash. So I'll show you that in a little bit. This does come as a suite and it has some very pretty designer series paper. Um, some of the dandelions and some other uh, different colors in here and it's all double-sided. So there's a lot of fun designs. This uh, piece right here is meant for you to actually punch out. So this stamp set is sold also as a bundle with this punch. So it has a little baby dragonfly and a bigger one. So you can line this up and punch and I'll show you exactly what I mean because I'll be showing that to you on my live here. So let me move this out of the way and let me get started. So the very first card, I'm going to use um, this sheet of paper and I'm going to punch out one of the dragonflies. So, and I've already done it, but I, um, I just wanna show you exactly how I did it. So our punch will actually match up to these designs. And it'll also match up to one of the smaller ones, but you have to cut it away first. So I've done that already for the TV purposes, haha. -ha. So I have my piece that I chop, chop, bleh, cut out from another piece, I was gonna say chopped out of designer paper. And when I went in here to try to line it up and punch it out, it's a little difficult because now my paper's too short. So this is a great tip that I learned is to use a post-it note. And I can actually go over the wings if I want a little bit. Um, I could probably even come up here. I just don't wanna go too far down here because when I push it in, it won't, it won't fit. So I can go like this and use that as a little extra um, piece, like an extension. And now I can take that and move everything around without being frustrated that it's too short. So I would simply line that up and just punch it out. So I've done that already with a couple other colors. One of them... <laughs> Okay, I'll show you. One of them, I moved the punch and I kind of made a boo-boo. So I'm not going to use that one, but I'll be using one of these for sure. So 
Next, I took my cardstock and I am using the Mossy Meadow. And with this cardstock, I cut it at five and a half by, I don't remember. <laughs> I didn't write it down because I'm going to put it all on my website by seven. And then I scored it. I went this way and scored it at four and a quarter. So you can do it any way you want. But again, I will have the measurements on my site later today. I do have a piece of white, Whisper White for the inside, and this is five and a quarter by four, and that will go right here. And then I have a piece of Whisper White for the front panel, and this one is five inches this foot. Nope, sorry, it's five and a quarter that way by two and a half, so this will go on the front. And then I have my designer paper, and I thought this was super cute. Um, some of those little dandelions, the paper is just adorable. So this is two and a quarter by five. And so this one, I'm going to just go ahead and do my front layer first. So let me go ahead and glue this down. I have to show off my scissors first. Stamping Up just did a big online it used to be our, it was called convention and then they changed it to on stage. And we just did this online with so many thousands and thousands of demonstrators all around the world. It was really cool. And so we, um, I'm looking for my glue and it's right in front of me. So they sent anybody that was eligible for, used to be called manager's reception, but now they call it center stage. And our new event is called On Stage. So our center stage and our manager's gift basically was the pair of scissors and this beautiful charm that went with it. It's a scissors charm. So kind of a fun thing that, that they gave us. So I, I wanted to show it off today. <laughs> I'll be needing my scissors. So I thought that was perfect. Okay, I know my lighting isn't the best, so I'm going to pull this light over and see if this helps. Ah, there we go. Now you guys can see what I'm doing, right? Ugh, that's too low. Come on, light. There we go. Okay, so I'm putting, this is actually the front of my card, and I'm just laying out the pieces, and then, oh my God, that is so crooked. I'm gonna have another crooked day. I can just tell because I looked at it a minute ago and it looked fine. And now I look back again and it looks very crooked. So let me glue this on again. <laughs> that drives me crazy. And some people say that's not a very long drive. I would have to agree with them. So let me try this again. I'm gonna put this on so it is straight. I'll blame it on the lighting. Actually, it kept it keeps like casting this terrible shadow. So I will be purchasing a new light for in here. I used to I used to do all my classes at home in my in this studio in my living room here. I don't know how I did it without really good lighting. Maybe it's because I'm a couple years older. <laughs> It all makes a big difference, right? Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to do a little bit of stamping on this centerpiece that's going to go on the inside. So before I glue it down, I want to put my stamp um, images on. And then I also want to make sure that I am able to glue this on before it gets glued into the center. So that's that's a biggie. So let me do my stamping first. I have the Blackberry Bliss ink. I love this color. It's kind of a messy color, but boy, is it pretty, pretty. And I'm going to use our new dragonfly stamp. So just lightly tapping it on there. And then I'm going to stamp it up here in this corner. Kind of about there. Sure, that looks good, right? <laughs> That's how I measure. Okay, I was trying to see if there was something else I wanted to use that for, but I think, I do think I have another image that I'll stamp with that. So I kind of started to put this card together so I'd have one done to show you, and then I thought, nah, I'll just, I'll just do it all on live, right? 
take a deep breath and just do it all live. <laughs> you can stamp some sentiments in here as well, or there are some um, fun little sayings, but I'm going to use the thank you for your kindness on the outside. So I wasn't really going to stamp anything else on the inside, although those flowers would be very pretty. But I'm going to just keep it super simple. Okay, so before I glue this down, I want to glue on this piece that's going to be our belt, like our belt that's going to go into the buckle, right? So I need to measure here where I want this to go. So you can either eyeball or... What I did was I measured an inch up. There's like no perfect science here, but I measured about an inch up. And then I'm going to measure about three quarters of an inch in. Let me see if that was all the way from the edge. It was just from this white layer. I have a piece over there that I was messing with earlier, but it it's really kind of a mess, so I'm not going to show it to you. <laughs> but I'm going to just have an idea of about where I want my punch to go. So next I'm going to use our, our punch. And, you know, this punch has come in handy for so many different things. When it first came out, I thought, well, that's a strange design. But I've grown to really love it, and I use it quite often. So I'm going to just bring that punch right in here. And you can see, I don't know if you can see my little pencil marks there, but that's just for me to have an idea of about where I want this to go. So now I want it to be straight on either side. So I'm gonna look right here and it'll punch through all of those layers. So make sure you do your exercises and so that your hands are super strong and that you can punch that out <laughs> like I just did. Okay. Now, for the next piece of this, on, um, on my little Blackberry Bliss piece here, I wanted to corner round the edge. So this is the part that's going to go into the hole over here. So I'm going to simply corner round um, the piece of the strapping that's going to go in. So I have that done. And then for my piece that I'm going to put my sentiment on, it's just a piece of Whisper White, I'm also going to corner around that. So there we go. Hi, Tess. Welcome. Alrighty. Next piece I'm going to do is I am going to put this on, but I'm not going to put my glue under on this side because I really want to make sure that I can line that up perfectly with... Um, with the little slot that it's meant to go in. So for now, I'm going to just glue this down. Now I did use, you don't have to, but I did use a piece of the Whisper White Thick. I thought it would just um, be a little stronger and it was sitting right in front of me. So I just grabbed it and used that. Now I just glued that down like I said I wasn't going to. So I will quickly pick that up so that now I can get my piece in here before that glue settles. So if I do this, this was the easiest way I figured it out, you guys. You might have another way, but the other thing is, I think if you lay this out first, then it'll all go in perfectly, but I was kind of worried about it not fitting in there. So there. There's that part. So now I'm just going to slip some glue underneath here, if I can. There we go, and just hold that down. So I'm sure there's many easier ways. Candy always finds the hardest way to do it. The next card I show you will actually be a lot more simplified. But I think if I had even just laid it over the top, then I could have measured exactly where it would have gone in. Hello, Catherine. Welcome. So now this piece is going to simply just fit right inside. See how it's all coming along? So this is called a buckle card. Next, I'm going to take my little whisper white piece and I want to stamp my message on here and then I'll glue all of this down. So my 
my buckle piece, I didn't tell you, that one I measured, it's just under two inches. Two inches was just a little bit too tight, so it's really one and seven eighths, but it's just under two inches. And then it is um, five and a half inches long. I have black, you're not gonna be able to see it very well. Uh, five and a half inches long, and then I scored it at three and a half inches. Just enough to have, yeah, just enough to have that little belt piece be able go in, to go inside. So next I wanna do all my stamping before I glue this down. Otherwise I'm gonna have some uneven areas there. So I chose the thanks, or I'm sorry, thank you for your kindness. And I just thought that was such a nice, nice stamp. Um, that one I used, yeah, I used the Mossy Meadow ink, and I think I will use that again. So I am going to literally just tap, tap, tap. I have to show you guys this. This is a brand new ink pad. Woohoo! We don't often see these, right? <laughs> it's brand new. My other green one got just well-loved, and I decided to get rid of it and get a new one. So I just want to tap. I see that I got the edges on there. So I'm going to redo it because I wasn't paying attention. But literally, you just want to do a tap, 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 maybe three taps. And then on this, on this particular um, words, I'm stamping it over here just a little bit off. And oh, good, I didn't get the U. Thank goodness there are two sides to every paper now i have it see you guys everybody makes mistakes i am never going to tell you i am perfect because that is so far from the truth so there now i fixed it it's a little crooked but <laughs> you know what we're just going for it this is this is, looks really good just tell me how great it looks <laughs> Okay, next I'm using our Bumblebee uh, ink pad. And this is one of our ink colors. I love this ink color. It's funny, it's very close to the uh, curry, but it, it's just a little bit, a little bit different. So I've, I've really been enjoying using it. So these are these cute little dragonflies that I'm going to stamp right over the top and let them fly around and enjoy the air. And then I'm going to glue them onto the front of my Blackberry Bliss piece. So let me move my ink pad. I know, I normally stick my hand in it, so I don't wanna do that. <laughs> so next, I'm gonna just glue this on. And I do wanna make sure I get this closely to the edge because Get it close to the edge right here because you don't want this part catching on your paper every time you go to put it in. Hello, Kim. So I'm gonna line this up. Again, I'm having a crooked day. <laughs> I do amuse myself. Okay, and now you guys, this is going to just simply go inside here. And there's our buckle card. Not done yet, though. Remember those dragonflies I showed you from this beautiful designer series paper? Well, I punched one of the larger ones. I actually punched the large one, and I did punch a couple of the small ones. Let me bring this back. There's this size that's small, and then there's the itty-bitty ones. This particular, this is more of the medium one. That one is... Sorry, I didn't see my punch. It is meant for this one here, the little tiny punch that's on the top. So you can get a lot of these little midi medium sized ones as well. So I thought that I would use the green one. It looked super pretty. And I had an idea to put it right here just to kind of hide the, um, sorry, that's not where I wanted it just like that, to give me a little bit of color onto my um, my white piece, but also to have some color 
right here. I am going to use a dimensional to put that on. And I have some baby dimensionals, some baby mini ones. And I want to put them right about here. Let's see if I can make that work. I'll put another one down here just to keep it so it's pretty strong that when I put it all together, um, it'll kind of float over that opening part and hide a little bit of that area. I'm not trying to glue it shut. I just want it to kind of hide that buckle area. So here you go. Isn't that cool? And then just pick up your dragonfly and slide it right underneath there and slide it right back in. You actually can kind of take and bend this up if you want a little bit. What do you think? Now, one of the things that I want to show you, um, I was going through some very old boxes, very, very, very old boxes of stamps. And this was what gave me the inspiration for this card. And it's adorable, but I don't even know how many years ago it was made. But it was a dragonfly buckle card that I wish we had something like this because I just thought that was adorable. And it was an old, old stamping up set. And I loved the little stitching on here. And I do remember that stamp. But this is what gave me the inspiration to make you guys this buckle card that I did just using our new Dragonfly Garden set. So that's that's my first card. I will move on and show you my next card. Um, let's see. All right, let me move this stuff out of my way and slide everything else over. So I need this. All right, the next one I'm going to use is our Dressed to Impress stamp set. And I love this stamp set. And actually, it's funny because in the spring holiday or the spring catalog this last springtime this year, I was using it a lot. And then the newer catalog came out, so I kind of set it aside. But when I was looking for a card to make for you guys, I thought this was just super cute and I wanted to keep it simple. So I, um, I pulled it off of the shelf and I'm going to use it for you today. So I'm going to use the same punch, which is our classic label punch, and the stamp set. So let me go ahead and put this together for you. And again, I promise you I will put all of the measurements on my candystampers.com site. So this base is going to be our Black Berry Bliss. And I did cut this in a different direction. So the last one I did was cut and opened in this direction. And then this one is going to be cut and open in this direction. So I will put this together for you. I'm so happy to share. So for my other color, I decided to use, I wanted to have a nice coordinating color. And this is our Purple Posy. This is our um, basic in color designer series paper. It's very pretty. And I thought it was nice because it just had a little bit of a texture look to it. You could probably get a piece and just run it through the embossing folder. But um, I thought this was just perfect for what, what I was trying to accomplish here. So that will go right down into the center. Next. Oh, I'm glad you love dragonflies, Karen. You know, they're super popular. A lot of people love them. Hold on, guys. I'm grabbing my marker. Okay. Get my marker out here, too. So I have my inside piece, and then I have my outside piece. So I use the Purple Posy um, cardstock, which is right here. And with that, I used our Ornate Floral Embossing Folder. This is one of the 3D embossing folders. So when you run it through, you get a really nice, nice impression on there. And it just makes these flowers pop right off of your cardstock. So it's just so beautiful. 
It's hard to see, so I brought the paper over to show you. All right, I already ran it through for us, so I'm gonna go ahead and simply glue that on. Before I punch, yep, before I punch. I'm being very daring. I know. <laughs> so let me get some glue on here. It looks like I'm gonna use a lot of glue on here. <laughs> Nothing like using the brand new bottle that I just opened up. Maybe that's why I go through so much glue. Actually, I do love this glue because it goes a long way. Well, when you use it more sparingly, <laughs> it's more sparingly than I do. But it's all good. Okay, does that look straight? Yes, that does look straight. Hi, Melissa. Alrighty, on the next part, what I'm going to do is I am going to open this piece up. Now, again, this is the front, and it's going to open this way, but I need to turn it in order to get my punch in. So this is pretty cool because this, for this one, it's much easier to measure because you're just gonna put the punch as far in as it'll go and you're gonna center it, kind of eyeball it side to side and then just punch out that piece. So that is done. So now we have our centered piece and we have our next piece, which is our, our strapping that's gonna go in. So I'm gonna use another layer of the Blackberry Bliss. But before I do that, I have a um, belt piece, I guess I'll call it my belt. And this one is seven inches, it's scored at uh, three and a half, but it's seven inches by Again, I if you if you cut it at two, it'll be a little tighter fit going through here, but it will work. And I just cut it right underneath it, like a sixteenth of an inch off. But two inches will work fine. I know a lot of people don't like to work with eighths or sixteenths, so I tried to keep it very simple. All right. So next, what I want to do is I want to glue down this piece and I'm going to glue this on top but yeah I want to do that first I was going to do some stamping but I don't need to because I'm putting it onto a punched image so this will work just fine and dandy so we are going to glue that down and then I do like corner rounding this one little edge here and I forgot to do that first so we will do that right now. Just wanna make sure that's not sliding anywhere. Um, that's not my corner rounder, this is my corner rounder. I love this Trio Punch. It has all sorts of cool little things on it, but it definitely has a nice corner rounder when I put the paper in there the right way. Oh my God. I don't have it in there straight. There we go. Let me just cut that little notch off that I left. Because apparently I didn't put it in there very straight. Looks good to me. There's nothing stuck in there. There we go. All right, so this is going to get glued down and then this piece will slide in there just like that. Let me clean off my mess here. So. It's pretty cool that this panel on the back here will fit perfectly into the center of my card, just like that. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna be daring and I am gonna glue that baby down. But when I do, I'm going to be able to move it a little bit because of the way that this glue is. So this makes it a little bit easier. I can actually slide this to where it goes. And then I'm gonna see that that looks straight. And then this is going to go right inside this, like so. And it closes your card. There's your buckle. You guys can do so many different things with this design. It's really cool. If you look online, there's a ton of ideas out there. 
but I'm really, really excited to show you this one. Okay, so next what I did was I used our... I didn't bring the names of all the punches with me, but I did use this um, one of our label punches here, and I punched out a piece in the blueberry... I'm sorry, the Blackberry Bliss. Oh, I need to slow down. <laughs> and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that right on the top. But I thought first what I want to do is add a little bit of ribbon. And I was playing around with this earlier and it came out really cute. So this is our crinkle seam, seam binding ribbon. And it worked great. So hopefully it's going to work great again. So let me show you guys. How I did this now I am being very generous with the ribbon because I'd rather have too much than not enough while I'm showing you this plus I'm tying a bow so I want to have plenty plenty to work with so my bow and the nice thing about this is I can move it around so my bow I want it to go right about here so let me tie a quick knot. This is bow tying 101. <laughs> and then I can always slide that up here a little bit. There we go. Now, funny enough, I found that if I tie my bow upside down, that I get a better, a better bow. So I am going to give it a try. You can see if what I say is truth or not. This ribbon is super cute. It's small and just goes with so many different things. Alrighty, that's not too bad, huh? What do you guys think? You like your bow? All right, next, let's put this inside. We'll tuck that in like it's supposed to go. And then I'm going to take my little punched piece and I am going to pop this up. So my dimensionals are right in front of me. Thank goodness that I don't have to run across the room. So you guys, I'm moving, I am actually in the middle of moving my studio from a commercial building back to my house. And so I feel like I'm a little scattered today, probably because this is my first live I've done. And I still don't know where everything is. Pretty much unpacked a lot of boxes but I still have a lot of stuff to move. So thanks for bearing with me here as I feel like I'm just not all here. I'm here, but not all here. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna pop this up with some dimensionals, having that ribbon right down the center. Then I decided that on top of this, I wanted to stamp a, um, one of our images from the Dress to Impress stamp set. So I liked the Hello Fabulous. I always thought that's just a fun card that you can send to anybody. One of your more fabulous friends. So let's ink this one up with the Blackberry Bliss again. And whenever I use the photopolymer stamps, I do like having a little cushion underneath me. It definitely helps for the image. If you're stamping on a flat table, sometimes your stamp, because this doesn't have a, any cushion to it, the stamp will come out flat. So if you're having that problem or it's just not like the really clean image, make sure you have a foam mat underneath you, which is what I have. And it's just making the images come out so pretty. Plus the ink helps a lot this pretty um, Blackberry Bliss ink. Hello, Deb, I hope you're doing well today. Thanks for tuning in. So on top of my little label here, I am going to punch out a circle using my one and a half inch circle punch. And with this, I'm going to simply just glue this on. Now I'm being a little careful in case there, uh, my ink is still wet because I smeared it earlier when I was playing with it. So I just wanna make sure I'm not gonna smear it all over and ruin my beautiful card. Okay, you liking it so far? 
I love it. So you get the ribbon right in the middle and then you have some of your little Hello Fabulous, but I'm not done yet. I thought that was really cute, but it was just way too simple. And I realized, you guys, I could have moved this over more and had it more centered. But I'm telling you, my centering is off today, so we'll just go with what I have here. And just know you can move it around anytime you want. All right, so in this stamp set, we have a shoe and we have some perfume and some lipstick. It's really a girly, girly set. And any of you that know me, I'm not super girly, girly, so it's kind of fun that I picked this one. So I thought it would be nice to add a little bit of a, um, just a little piece down here in the corner. It looked like it needed something. So again, I'm going to use some dimensionals and I have already um, stamped it and die cut it out because I wanted to make this go a little bit easier and you guys don't have to sit here and watch me die cut. I know it's, I know it's a good thing because you can always learn when you're die cutting, but um, I just didn't, I have enough stuff on my table. <laughs> Let's just say that. So down here, I'm going to simply just pop this up and it'll be nice because it's going to kind of hide a little bit of that area that gets tucked in there. And for this ribbon that keeps wanting to float around, you guys, this ribbon looks really cute. If I go like this, take a glue dot and just stick it on there and then kind of make it look right like this so that it's like flowing just like that and then I'll put another one over here because I've got to get this ribbon out of my way just right there oh you guys I have a funny story so I was in here unpacking boxes the other day and working on some Christmas cards and it was actually day before yesterday. And I hear this little like pecking sound, like a bird. And I look up and don't you know it, there is this gigantic woodpecker outside my window, pecking kind of on the side of the house. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I wonder how long he's been doing this. And we have a brick house. So he was kind of pecking between the shutter and the brick, which is not a good thing, right? But anyway, I um, had gotten into feeding the birds this spring. And so I sent the picture to my husband and he, he says, well, that's your fault. You brought all the birds back over here. <laughs> but oh gosh, it was so funny. Totally unexpected. Okay, so far, so good. But I want to add a little bit more. And that is some of these flowers that we have. So these flowers are super simple. And if you want, you can add a little like piece to the center without coloring them in. You can actually stamp the little, um, the little tiny piece here. And of course I didn't bring over a tiny block. So I'll use one of my bigger blocks. When I stamped these images, I put two of them on the one block and I just inked them up and stamped them right onto my scrap. And the reason I did that was because I could then run them through the big shot, sorry, not the big shot, the Stampin' and Cut machine. Stamp and, em stamp and cut an emboss machine. Okay, I hear people calling them the big boss, so I'm gonna call it the big boss. But you can stamp both images at one time and then die cut them out together as well. So it kind of saves you a step. But I already did that and then that way I was going to be able to pop up a little flower up here give it a little bit of um, more color but I wanted to pull out my little blobs that I was talking about my little center pieces I don't want to call them stamping blobs because they're not stamping blobs <laughs> they're just my little centers to the flower so Oh, here we go. So I am going to see if that one fits there and fits there. Perfect. And then I have a smaller one. So again, I'm going to um, this time. So we were not able to get the Purple Posy ink pads to work properly. And so Stamping Up had pulled those from the market last year. 
but we have the marker so I'm going to simply just marker my stamp and you guys can do this with all of your different um, stamp and write markers because they just add a little bit of color so let me line this one up it's not really meant to be anything perfect but it just gives it a little hint of color and then I'll do the same here and you always want to use the side of your marker not the tip but the side and just simply brush over it and then you'll have a little bit of color to add to your flower and then I have so on this particular stamp set they have two different sizes and they have a big one for your big flower and then they have a smaller one for the smaller flower so let's just add that on here and I, then I'm going to be close to being done sharing for today oh that looks so nice I love this color and I know a lot of people purple is their favorite color mine is blue but I'll tell you what working with this was making me very happy so now I get it I understand why people like purple so much all right so I'm going to pop that one up and I know aha on my table I have a small tiny mini dimensional which I love these things and I'm just going to use one because I'm just going to kind of pop it off of that side there. And then that way I have a little bit of color down here. And then on this one, I'm going to lay it flat just to have another little flower up here. But I want to make sure, you know what? I have to make sure that this thing opens so I don't want it stuck off of that edge. I just remembered that. It would be a big, big problem. Okay, guys, so here's our card. What do you think? And then you can put your little sentiment inside. What are on here we can put? There is a... There's a couple different ones. There is a Happy Mother's Day one if anybody needs a Mother's Day card next year. But we have Kindness is Always in Style, Life is Short by the Shoes. I like that one. We're going to use that one. Life is Short by the Shoes. You could put Happy Birthday, whatever you want. Where is that stamp? I'm reading them backwards, so... That's Mother's Day, and this one is, we'll do the shoe one. Sounds cute to me. Take this stamp off, and thanks you guys for joining me and being so patient today. <laughs> oh, lordy, 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 I'm doing okay. All right, I really wanted to stamp something inside, so I'm going to do Life is Short. By the shoes because I just think that's adorable yay might not be straight but I'm sitting down and I can't really see over the top so it looks really nice to me what do you guys think do you like these buckle cards they are so cute it needs bling I see it needs bling let me get the diamonds Diamonds are forever. I'm coming. Oh. I'm right here. But I saw where I wanted to put a little bit of bling. And I think I need some of the smaller ones. You guys also, the other thing that we have that is such a cool, cool tool is the... Um, Wink of Stella. Oh my goodness. If you have not used Wink of Stella, mm -mm. it is the best. And I'll show you what that does here. I may have to move that because I think it's not straight. Oh, there we go. Oh, you got to have some bling, some bling and some shininess, right? 
some sheen. So this is the Wink of Stella pen. And once you get it all started, all you have to do is just paint over your project and it will make it shiny. Don't know if you can see it. Here, let me see if I can move the light over a little bit more. Uh, where's the camera? There it is. Can you see it kind of sparkle a little bit? Anyway, oh my gosh, Wink of Stella, it's the best thing ever. So here's my cards. I hope you love them. And let me put this one back together. So we have our Dragonfly Garden. And then we have our Dressed to Impress. And these are my my um, cards for today. And they're called a buckle card. And again, thanks for joining me. And if you would love to join Team Candy Stampers, oh my gosh, we have such a great time. I'd love to have you. You can simply private message me and or go on to candystampers.com and the information and link is there for you to join. So I'm happy to help you any way I can. I will see you next week on Wednesday at 4 11 Eastern Standard Time for the 411 on my next stamping project. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a great week. Bye.